Hey, listen, it's always an honor. I, I, whenever we have this man on, a, on our show, it's, it's so much we can learn from him. His, his story in itself is an after-school ABC movie. You know, it's something that could be taught in college courses, college curriculums on how not to give up on your dreams and what happens when you don't. And so to have him with us today is an honor. Um, 2022 is our first time speaking with them. With celebration, we're celebrating a Medea homecoming, something we thought we'd never see again and we get to see again. But we're also celebrating his everyday moves on this planet, man. We want to pick his brain and welcome him back to the show. Give it up for Tyler Perry. Hey, Tyler hey, Perry. Hey, hey. Oh. Tyler Perry. What's going on? How you been, man? How do you keep the interviews fresh? I know you're doing a lot of press today. What, what is it that you do? What's your secret to keeping your interviews really fresh and abundant? You know, it's all about the person who's doing the interviewing. And when they can't find the mute button, that's pretty damn funny to me. So that's oh, how it all starts for me. <laughs> oh, wow. That's what we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that made the edit floor. I didn't know that was going to make the interview. <laughs> oh, wow, man. You never know when you're dealing with the director, you know, last minute decisions. There it is, right there, right there. <laughs> uh, what, what, well, let's talk about a Medea homecoming. Was this, I mean, at one point, I didn't think a Medea, another new um, installment of Medea was going to happen. Yeah. Um, it seemed like years ago, and now it has. What, what was that about? Two things, man. I was I was done, but I, I looked at the state of the world. And I wanted to make people laugh because you look at all the civil and social unrest that's going on. You look at what's happening in politics. We're in a pandemic. Everybody's masked up. Nobody's seeing people's faces. So I wanted to do something that made us laugh and laugh out loud, right? And mm -hmm. that's where this thing came from. It was no need to dust her off if I wasn't going to be able to bring bring her back and make people laugh. When I tell you, I cut loose in this one. I mean, she is she is as outrageous as she's ever been saying things I never would let her say in the past. So uh, I, I had some fun with this one. When, when I got to say, too. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying she's saying things you would have never had her say in the past. When do these things come to you? Do they come to you in your sleep or, or you designate time to write? When does this happen? As I'm writing, man, I, I put it on paper, but when we get, I get in costume, we get on set and I'm there with people like Cora and Brown and Bam and and the new uh, new character we just added, Mrs. Brown, Agnes Brown, who's huge in Europe and, uh, and the other parts of the world to have us come together, man, the ad libs were rolling. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. Whether it's the big screen or even the tiniest of screens, which is our phone, it's hilarious. I'm talking about like the social media memes that you've been using with Medea to promo from um, the Super Bowl. Medea J. Kind of taking <laughs> shots at FJB from uh, Medea's interview of Oprah to celebrate her album 90. Uh, is hell, yeah, yeah. And I know in the past, uh, Mr. Perry, you mentioned very proudly how you handle all the writing for all of your characters. It doesn't matter like which direction you're going in. Is that the same case when it comes to social media? A lot of folks hire social media coordinators and no captions from Adia be hilarious as well. Is that you? Yeah, no, I'm right. I'm writing all that stuff. I think if I had hired somebody to to run my social media, I have a lot more followings and I would be posting a lot more than I do. But no, it's just when something comes up, I say, hey, let's create this or let's do this or let's put this up. But yeah, yeah, wow. it's me. It's you. Uh, so Medea is here to make us laugh, you know, um, and, and is it fair to say that during this pandemic time when you weren't laughing, was it the creative process that helped bring you joy? Was it therapeutic to write this? during that time? I was, you know, I was trying to get people through, man, because, you know, I set up a camp at the studio at the top of the uh, pandemic and we kept all my folks working all the way through. People who had bought houses and cars and had kids in college and didn't know what they were going to do. I set that camp up, we, we marched all the way through with that one positive case. So that, that to me was where my focus was at the time, mm -hmm. dealing with that and making sure all my people didn't, you know, step back from all the success, the successes they were having. So, so I was writing it during all of that. That, you know, that that's an interesting comment. I, I really want to, you've been doing this, you've been successful for so long and, and Tracy's been successful so long and I've had, I've had my run as well with success. Um, I know recently, I, I often like every few years, I have to reset goals. I have to break things down and I like to step away from some of the things that got me there in the first place because it's safe. Does Tyler Perry do that? Do you like, you ever kind of reflect on your life and go, okay, I got the studio now. I got, you know, I've worked, I've, I've generated billions of dollars with my work. 
what's next for me? Have you thought about that? What, what kind of thoughts do you have? Well, right now, it's, it, the thing that gets me the inspiration is every day I'm coming in, I'm seeing all these young black people coming through the gates who never would have had a shot in this business. I mean, by the thousands coming to work. And when they see the studio, when they see the stages, when they see what I've built, the look on their face is like, man, I could do this if he could do it. That's what that's what motivates me now. That and raising my son. My son's seven years old. So making sure that he turns out to be an incredible person is is where my 100% focus is. But yeah, man, I, I feel like I've been there, done that, mm -hmm. bought the t-shirt. So now I'm at a place where it's just like, okay, what's next? And I, and I see an exit, right? So I'm bringing in all these different writers, bringing up all these different directors and trying to find people with the right attitudes to be able to learn because I, I'm finding a lot of younger people think they know it all and yeah. they don't want to take the moment to sit back and, and get the information because the information that I have is, is the difference between these, these kids having a job or being an owner or being broke in a few years or being very, very wealthy. So I'm trying to pass on the information for anybody who wants it. But seeing a lot of these younger folks coming up, man, it's been interesting to hear their response to what I'm trying to teach. Mm, you know, Even I'm you? I'm sorry, Tracy. I just can't imagine somebody who's working on his studio floor, studio ground, not being patient enough to hear the wisdom. Listen, yeah. like Jay Z and I both, we deal with this, man. It's just like we're trying to pass on what we've learned. And there's, I have called people who I see doing the little, little things, and I go, if you do this, this, and this, then th that'll change your whole outcome. And that's always met with, who do you think you are? And I don't want to do that Tyler of Paris shit. What are you doing? You know what I mean? And I get that they might not respect some of the things that I've done to get where I am, but that doesn't negate the fact that the knowledge and the information is there so that they can apply it to their own situation if they would just take it. Mm, got you. I kind of want to go in, I want to stay in the same lane that Sway put us in, but going in the opposite direction because Tim Ferriss, um, who's a well-known entrepreneur, um, as well as podcaster, I remember he said for a year, he started asking himself, what if I could only subtract to solve problems? Mm. You know, a lot of times we think about what more can I do, right? And he started asking himself, like, what should I simplify? to get to the solution. And so I'm wondering for you, Mr. Perry, what does having a not to do list help you in any way? Yeah, well, well, listen, I start at the top of my year every year in the mountains in prayer for like a month and a half, not doing anything. I may do some writing when I'm in that time, but it's a time to sit and focus and hear, pray, be silent, be clear about what's next in my life, right? So that's very important that I build in those nothing breaks where I'm doing absolutely nothing. But I love that idea of what do I have to subtract to be better? Because at 52, I'm finding myself looking at the exit now going, okay, if I move this piece here, I don't have to do that. If I move this piece, I don't have to do that. So I, I am at a place now where I'm starting to subtract and step back and let more people come up. I'm just looking for the right people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hear that. So then will you finally be okay with having more writers? Is that something that you would shift? I have eight shows on the air right now, and there are five of them that have different writers that, oh, okay. that write all the episodes. And my biggest concern about that was, will the ratings hold? Will the, will the audience keep watching? And they have been. So, so yes, I'm 100% fine with having more writers, letting them come in, letting them do the thing. It's, I wasn't writing out of... Um, uh, because I wanted to. I wasn't doing all that because I wanted to. I was just in a position where I had to because of the way I write and the budgets yeah. that I have. I realized I had to write within a certain budget. And if in, 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 to teach a writer how to write a show within this budget, within this timeline, to to make this work for the directing the way that I direct, mm -hmm. it was all very specific because again, all of my shows had really, really small budgets. Yeah. Well, kudos to you because you are an ecosystem. <laughs> like Tyler that. Perry is an ecosystem. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I'm a Dia Homecoming uh, premiere in February 25th this Friday on Netflix. Um, I read about the prequel series, Mabel, um, and that um, actually being in partnership with Showtime, if I'm not mistaken. Am, yeah. am I mistaken, Mr. Perry? Yeah, no, that's why you called me Mr. Perry. Y'all killing me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, I expected from the millennial. Come on, Sway. Uh, but, but, but yeah, no, with, uh, with, um, yeah, it's a, it's a prequel about, I want to give a hire a real actress to talk about Medea's life in the seventies, kind of like a Foxy Brown kind of mm -hmm. going back to those moments and having her in those situations. So it's, it's still in the works. We'll see what happens. 
Let me ask you this, I, because we, we've had a lot of actors who've come on the show and talked about the way the, the, the infrastructure of the film business has changed and the way people get paid and how streaming has affected their, their income. In some cases, streaming has hurt their income. In other cases, you got probably less notable actors who get more jobs and somehow it's, it's benefiting them. Mm -hmm. I'm curious for someone like you, where, where income isn't necessarily the issue, it's the relationship. What would make you partner up with a Showtime as a opposed to an HBO Max or or Amazon or some? How, how do you determine who it is you do business? Well, with? these conglomerates are very, very um, small, all right? They're huge, but they're small. Like I'm with Viacom, well, Viacom's on Showtime. Mm -hmm. So, and owns VET and VH1 and Comedy Central. So that's my universe that I can work in across all of the networks without violating my, my contract and my deal, mm -hmm. right? So if I do a movie or something and, and it's with Paramount, which is also Viacom, and it does, we, we don't want it, doesn't work out there, I'm open to take it anywhere else. And that's how I ended up here at Netflix, which I love working with Netflix because uh, there's been all this conversation about black movies not traveling around the world. Well, Netflix did away with that because my last movie, A Fall from Grace, opened around the world to mass numbers for the for the uh, streamer, and I'm expecting the same thing from Medea. So, so that that's that's how that works. If I'm outside of, as you say, ecosystem. If I'm outside of the Viacom ecosystem, then it's it's it changes mm -hmm. things. Have you started thinking about NFTs at all? Is that a lane that you? I I have. Listen. Y'all with these NFTs and bitcoms. I, I'm from the I'm from the days of NSF checks. I don't know what y'all talking about. I'm trying to look at this, trying to figure out what what all of this is. It's just too much information, and and I feel like I'm doing okay without it. But I would anybody yeah. who wants to do it, y'all go right ahead. But I, I think I'm doing okay without it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we will ask that same question next year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> when, I, when I have all these NF, when I have all these NFTs and bitcoins, yeah, okay, cool. We'll see that. Uh, I love that you always bring up your son. I'm a, I'm a father as well. My, my daughter could babysit your son three times over. She's 23 years of age. Oh, man, man. Yeah, so um, I got a grown, powerful woman who would love to work for your studios. Um, I wanted to ask you, we recently, that was, I slipped that in there. That didn't wait, work. Wait, wait. Did anybody hear that? Nobody heard that? No, no, Sorry. we heard it. I thought I thought there was something to follow up. But yeah, we have an intern program, of course. Will she come in? Yeah, listen, if she's one of those younger people who want to come in and learn it and, and come up through the ranks to learn it the right way, she's more than welcome. Okay, okay. Uh, that, well, that, that's not where I was going to go. She got a job. I'm very fortunate. See, she see why you do that? Right. Why you do that? <laughs> but but if, I remember when she was younger and first wanted to get on social media, I was totally against it. And this was when she was probably around nine or 10 years of age. And um, we, we recently talked about, we, we talked about stories of different artists who don't want their kids, different celebrities who don't want their kid on social media. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? When, when you think it's appropriate for your son to have a page, if at all? Yeah, my yeah. son is, I mean, we don't even photograph him. We've never posted him because it, it, he, he has his own life, right? He has his own identity. And I don't want him tied up into me until he's able to understand what that means. Like we had a conversation over Christmas where um, I asked him if he knew what famous was. And he was like, yeah, that's when somebody really, he's seven years old. It's like, yeah, that's when a lot of people know who you are. I said, well, according to your definition, I'm famous. He goes, really? He's like, yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Can we finish coloring this this picture? You know, so he's not ready yet. And I don't want people telling him who he is or, or the social media nastiness getting into his head before he knows he, the solidness of the man that I'm trying to help him to be. So once he knows that, then if he wants to do it, then that's fine. But it, it'll probably be 12, 13, 14 before he even considers anything like that. Wow. He doesn't. He's not online. He doesn't go online for things. He's he he's not playing video games. He reads books. Um, we talk a lot. He gets like 20, 30 minutes to watch a, 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 one of his favorite cartoons or something like two or three times a week. But no, man, he doesn't have an iPad where he's running around doing things like that. Not my kid. Wow. He does must... he even... Go ahead. Okay. I was okay. going to say, does he even know that you're Medea? <laughs> like, is he able to kind of compartmentalize the many faces of Tyler? We, we just had this conversation and the way I broke it down, I started to explain to him that I'm an actor and that we started with Paw Patrol. Then we went to... Um, uh, uh, Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Then I showed him Old Man Joe. Then I showed him me playing Brian. And then I showed him Medea. And again, I was like, oh, okay, great. M moving on. He, he, he's yeah. not, he's not really, he doesn't care basically. Uh, yeah, right. He, not at this he, age. He, he just cares about your, uh, your, your attention and, and your presence. 
but what, will he be watching the homecoming though? Medea homecoming? Absolutely. Oh God, no, no, man. He hadn't seen any of that. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh no, God, no. no. My kids no, have. He, what do you... <laughs> no, he's no, this, he's seven, and the stuff we're talking about in there. No, no, I don't want him going to school saying some of that shit. No way. So no. <laughs> No. All right. Uh, well, before you go, look, it, 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 I, I'm surprised that you tell me, and then, it, and then I'm not surprised that you and Jay have had these conversations about these younger folks that want to, who are inspired by you, motivated by you, and get in your circle and not really all open ears on listening and taking in the wisdom. There, there are a lot of people who tune into this show that are young creatives. Three, three, maybe three fundamental rules about business you would suggest that they follow. What would they be? The biggest one for me is like, I've always honored people. Like I don't mess over anybody. I, I heard somebody say, no, he must be a bad person because he's a billionaire. I'm like, that's absolutely ridiculous because there are people who whose intention is to do good and do right for other people. So I don't dog anybody out. I don't mess over anybody. But the biggest thing that I learned is I, I set my focus on what I wanted to do and anything that didn't serve that I didn't do. So wherever your focus is, what you want to do, where you want to be, where you want to go, let that be your everyday goal to sit, wake up, dream, think, pray about that thing. And anything that doesn't serve it or would hinder you getting there, don't do it. Amen. Damn, shit. Okay, that's good. And that includes- That was a hell of a sound bite. That's why we call you Mr. Truth. Perry, by the way. Truth. It's Shout true. to Mr. It's Perry true. by the end of this conversation. All right, because you a professor. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, well, I, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Tracy, do you have anything else you want to um, end with? I just want to say I'm so grateful for you as a creative, but then just also as a spirit. So thank you so much for inspiring us personally as someone who's a part of the Black community, our shared community, but also just human to human. That's beautiful. And I'm watching you because there's a bridge between your generation and the next, and there are only certain people that are feeling it, and you're one of them. So keep that in mind. It's a huge responsibility, but just standing in the middle of that so you can bridge it is so important that we keep so we keep moving forward, just so you know. Thank standing you. In the middle. I yeah. love that. Tyler Perry and Elon Johnson, uh, who works with you over at your studios. Yes. Uh, Elon, let me tell you this. When I first came to work at Viacom and worked at MTV and I had the locks and I'm doing MTV news and all the different things I did years ago, it was Elon who trained me on how to be a proper wow. correspondent where I didn't want to use any slang and I wanted people to take our, our conversation seriously and, yeah. and kind of raise the level, raise the bar. It was Elon and a woman by the name of Moranike who both trained me and I always give them credit uh, when people talk about what I've accomplished, I mention them and now she works with you. Rightfully so. And she's awesome, man. She's awesome. Consistent. So yeah, that's awesome. Absolutely. All right, Tyler Perry, man. Let's give him a big round of applause and make sure you All check right, it brother. out Friday on Netflix. A Medea Homecoming. Good to talk to you, brother. Be safe. Same here, Sway. Okay, you right. take care, man. You okay. too. Peace. Okay.